take a look at this image. I mean, what do you think it is? It's blurred, but you can probably still tell that it's Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc. Now, what about this one? It's really blurred this time, but I'm sure you still recognized it as Mario. Those were pretty easy to decipher because they're recognizable characters. We know what's behind the blur because we've seen it before. But what if I showed you this? Could you figure out what's behind the blur? Well, today I'm going to show you that this might not actually be that hard to solve. And next time you blur your password, you might want to rethink it. The other day, I saw this post by my favorite YouTuber, Captain Disillusion. He was simply asking, can someone unblur these centered digits? Now, in order to claim my spot as the first one to solve this, I instantly started brainstorming ways to decipher the set of 18 digits that had been blurred into an unreadable mess. At first, it may seem impossible, but there are actually a surprising amount of cases throughout history where a similar thing has actually been worked out, especially with law enforcement. In 2007, Christopher Paul Neal was arrested for some pretty horrible stuff that I'm not going to mention in this video, but the way he was found out is pretty fascinating. You see, he would taunt the police by leaving pictures of himself online, but to hide his identity, each photo had an effect that would swirl his face. The police did struggled to decipher the photos at first, but eventually they realized that he probably just used some sort of common editing application to do it. So sure enough, using said application, they simply put the effect in reverse and were able to get a pretty clear photo of his face. This strategy of reversing the effect on distortion can also be used to reverse the effect of blurred license plates on driving cars. And funnily enough, the original question that Captain D asked, which all started this, was about how people preferred license plates to be removed. What I do know is that in a similar vein, photos of license plates are usually taken in motion, which requires software to engineer, but is generally still doable. I mean, this technology has actually been a thing for decades now. This particular software is reserved for law enforcement, and the video about it is like 15 years old, but that doesn't stop everyone in the comments from begging for access to the software to figure out who run into me when my car was parked and run off. I need this for a hit and run. Thank you for contacting us. Our products are restricted for law enforcement. Yes, I need to. Somebody ran away after he hit me behind. He refused to give me his details, but I managed to get a CCTV footage, but I can't take his number plate. Yes, same pro, but I got the car image. Can this YouTuber help me, please? Can you help me? I blurred the picture, please. How to purchase software. I'm working in crime branch. <laughs> Uh, I feel like you're not qualified for that, maybe. My point is, technology may have brought distortion into images, but it also allows us to remove distortion in pretty intuitive ways, even if people had to get a little bit creative to do so. So now that we know how to do it, we can just reverse the effect of the blur on these numbers and easily decipher the code. Right? Well, not exactly. To hide these numbers, the captain used a box blur, which is kind of like the poor man's Gaussian blur. That's not to say it doesn't come in handy every once in a while, but that's besides the point. The difference between this and something like, let's say, a swirl is that when you blur a photo, you're actively averaging pixels, which can overlap and, with enough strength, can actually be destructive. In some cases, algorithms can actually reverse the effect of a blur, but with too much blurring, you reach the point of no return. And that's where we are with this puzzle. The numbers are so blurred that it would even be impossible for, like, an AI algorithm to figure out. Which, by the way, these are very few and far between, but I saw some comments on my Twitter that were like, yeah, AI could do that. Okay. Do it. I mean, if it was that easy, just do it. I even bet that with no prior information, no hints, I could still guess exactly what is behind a blur. So I got my brothers to blur some player icons from this game called Geometry Dash so that I could try and decode them live on stream the next day. Just know Oliver's doing it right now and... Remember that for later. <laughs> I do not know how to use Photoshop. Maybe we're not brothers. The tr control T is the one you use to transform it, and then you hold shift so it doesn't I'm right, change. Wrong. Keep that in mind. Okay, then. so ch undo. No, hold, hold alt, and then do the edge. I was. <laughs> Me bro, oh, yeah. Yeah. My God, why is the undo button not working? <laughs> it doesn't go to the corners because it's not the same dimension. So. I know, but like, his oh, was different. Oh no, you deleted the smart filter. What if it just gets them all wrong on stream? <laughs> This is some sort of eye. What? This has to be right. <laughs> I gotta see what this is actually. No! Let's try it. Yeah, I think I nailed it. I mean, that's pretty much exactly. If you like, if you squint, that's the same. What? What is this? Come on. What? This is impossible. Just did not get a single one right. So I know what you're thinking. You suck at unblurring images. There's no way that you were the first one to unblur the numbers. Well, guess what? Well, I was. And after just 20 minutes of decoding, I accidentally earned a shout out on Captain D's channel by becoming the first person in the world to decode that block of numbers.
yeah, I'm pretty cool. And even though I may not be the best at unblurring images by themselves, there are still a few pieces of information in his post that at first, you may have taken for granted. Right here, you can see that he used After Effects' fast box blur set to 20, with the font as Arial Narrow Bold. Now, don't get me wrong, it definitely is possible to find those by yourself, especially because he left some numbers outside of the blur, which can make it super easy to identify the font, and that's even ignoring the fact that Arial's one of the most popular fonts, like, ever. Anyway, no matter how I ended up there, I had the font, the font size, the type of blur, and the blur size that was used. And why would I want that, you ask? Well, I was about to recreate the number grid pixel for pixel. <laughs> Come on. I was gonna say some sort of witty transition, but I don't even think that's as funny as this fat cat knocking everything over. So anyway, the next step of the process was bringing everything into After Effects and trying to match up my numbers with his. I was definitely rushing to do it, but I was pretty confident that no one else had thought about it. I was wrong, but you know, I was still gonna be the first person to get it done no matter what. So yeah, when I came up with my plan, I just got to it and recreated his exact number grid in After Effects. And again, it was easy knowing like the font and the blur, but once you get to the middle, obviously you don't know the numbers. So I just put a bunch of ones as placeholders and I quickly realized that sure, a blurred one and three are totally different, but like a six and eight, when you blur them, they look basically the same. So it's hard to trial and error and brute force your way through just guessing numbers until you have like the same exact blur that the original image had. And to be fair, I did get the first number but then I was pretty unsure about like every other number after that. But the good thing is on the spot, I remembered a blending mode that I use pretty often when I'm editing my videos. You see, sometimes when I'm editing my videos, I'll have to like cut from this to this. You can see that that's pretty jarring. And I know this isn't the best example, but the way that I would fix that, if I wanted it to be a smooth cut and some sort of like edit, then from here to here, I would want to overlay the clips in a way that my face is going to end up in the same place on the frame after I cut jarringly. So at least it's a little bit smoother. But the way that I line it up to where the most pixels are as similar as possible is a difference blending mode. And the difference blending mode is exactly what it sounds like. It just shows you the difference between your top layer and your bottom layer. The more similar a pixel, the more black it'll be. So you just want to make the screen as black as possible. So when I'm editing and line up my two faces on top of each other and then try to get the difference as little as possible, when you cut from one to another, it looks smooth. And if you want to see that difference blending mode used in the coolest way I've ever seen, then go to this video called Motion Extraction. It's actually one of the coolest videos on YouTube and it shows the tiny differences in movement in big landscapes and stuff like that. I'll link it down below. It just shows that frame differencing is an insanely powerful tool and it is 100% what made this possible. Back to our puzzle, I realized that if I overlay the original image on top of mine, then when I get the four right, it'll turn completely black. So then I really could just trial and error and brute force from there and try every number in each slot, which is what I did. So yeah, I would just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that one was zero. It was easy until I realized that the sixes and eights are still impossible to differentiate. But what if I just put like an exposure layer on top and now every single small difference is a bright blinding white that you would only see at the gates of heaven. From there, it was a breeze. I just basically felt like, who's like a famous puzzle solver? I don't know, Nicolas Cage? But basically, I figured it out and with every number revealed, it was time to post the result. And oh my God, I did not actually realized it was going to be first. People loved it. Captain Disillusion said he would give me a personal on-screen shout out on his YouTube channel. The whole thing instantly got posted on Reddit, got like 40,000 upvotes, and Smarter Every Day called me clever? That guy's verifiably smart. I'm clever, maybe. But then to be fair, 20 minutes later, this guy figured it out as well. And if I had just not seen it earlier, then maybe they would have gotten it first and then I wouldn't even be making this video right now. So I guess my strategy to decipher the code from a very blurred out image wasn't actually that original. And you know, I'm not special. I feel like anybody could have come up with this if they were determined enough. I just happened to see the post. Blurring images definitely can be destructive, but if you're not trying to get your information figured out by malicious people, then you probably shouldn't leave it behind a blur that has a chance to be removed. In fact, if you want to cover up anything, I would recommend the black box, the oldest trick in the book. Using the markup tool on your phone and wait, the black box strategy might have its flaws too. Because if you're on an iPhone, someone could theoretically go into adjustments, turn up the exposure, turn up the brilliance, turn up the highlights, turn up the shadows, turn down the contrast, and they would reveal the exact message that you were trying to hide. 
This stuff can be dangerous. Nobody wants information that they thought was safe to be revealed in any way. So please make sure that if you're trying to cover up your sensitive information, just use a completely opaque box. Don't blur it, don't swirl it, don't use just one pass of the marker tool on your phone. Unless you're a horrible person, actually. Then definitely do swirl your face and send it to the police while you're at it. But most importantly, don't give it to a group of determined computer nerds who would absolutely love to decipher a code that you gave them. Because in less than an hour, you're going to be staring back at your own password.